Okay, hello and welcome to another video, guys. Now, in this episode, we're gonna be breaking down the world's best surf towns. To be honest, this is a pretty arbitrary list because what actually constitutes a good surf town, and this is gonna depend on your personal opinion, you know, whether you like more of a city vibe or somewhere nice and chilled out, but I've kind of comprised this list of places that are very livable, so they've got a high standard of living, like kind of good quality of life, uh, job opportunities or the opportunity to work online and most importantly their proximity to really good waves so without further ado let's get down to it first up we're starting in Koolangatta now Koolangatta is arguably the world's most famous surf town it's a town that's produced countless world champions it's got such a high level of surfing in the town it's ridiculous there's so many good waves there you've got obviously D-Bar punchy A-frame beach break that's super consistent. Just around the corner there, you've got Snapper Rocks and the Superbank. One of the best waves in the world. Obviously, it's one of the most crowded, but on its day, perfect barrels, sections for turns. You've just got everything. Then, perhaps the jewel in the crown of the Gold Coast is Kira, which on the right day is like a freight train barrel where you can get 10, 20 second barrels insane part of coast around the coast as well there's so many other little beach break peaks that you can surf it's warm and sunny basically all year uh, it really is just a place that molds surfers into you know world champions and really advanced surfers as well in Koolangatta you've got a lot of infrastructure so you've got lots of surf schools you've got the HPC center down the coast it's just so well set up for getting better at surfing and then in town, so in Koolangatta, you've got loads of different restaurants, bars, cafes, places to stay. You know, if you're a digital nomad, you, it's a good place to get work done. If you're coming from overseas, Australia actually offers like a working holiday visa. So you can actually go to the Gold Coast and find work as a foreigner. So that's something to, to check out as well. Obviously the wages are very high, quality of living's very high. There's a lot of other like cool things to do regarding nature and wildlife around the coastline. So. Yeah, it just really is a town that has everything. The only downside to Koolangatta is the crowds because they're pretty gnarly. On the Gold Coast as well, you know, it's kind of like the center of the industry, like where all the top shapers are based, where all the surf outlets are. So it's just a really easy place to get surf equipment and get boards. Next up, we've got San Clemente in California. Now, if there was anywhere to rival Koolangatta for the surfing capital of the world, it would be San Clemente, I guess is the American version of the Gold Coast when it comes to industry. All the American shapers are based out of here. All the brands have bases here. Around the coast, there's so many good waves and San Clemente is a place that has shaped the surfing of Colohe Andino, Griffin, Colopinto. There's just so many good surfers that come out of that zone which is a testament to, I guess, well, how many people live there. It's such a high population, but kind of the infrastructure that's there and the waves that are on offer. Like the Gold Coast, it's just a place that nurtures high performance surf. Obviously you've got trestles, which is the best wave in the area. It's a perfect A-frame. You know, it's one of the easiest waves to surf ever. And then you've got like T-Street and some of the other beach breaks in the area, which are like really punchy, fun little beach break wedges so yeah if there's somewhere where i guess things revolve around surfing it, it's san clemente again like the gold coast it's really easy to get your hands on good boards now san clemente is a super wealthy town and that's probably another contributing factor to why so many professional surfers have come from the town because it's such like a wealthy place or at least it is nowadays you know there's a lot of money there so that obviously gives opportunity in terms of like living sort of a digital nomad lifestyle. I wouldn't say San Clemente is amazing for that. If you're wealthy and want somewhere to live, it's definitely a good place for that. While it's probably not like a backpacker place where you could necessarily just go and live, it's definitely a place with like a good quality of life, high standard of living, very fun waves, access to lots of equipment and boards, that kind of thing, a lot of coaching. Next up, we've got Hossegore in France, which is, I guess, the European answer to Koolangatta and San Clemente. A lot of the European surf brands have bases here. Hossegore, in particular, is a wicked town during summer and especially between the months of September and October. You've, it's probably the best place in the world to be a surfer. You've got those like long period autumnal swells that come in, usually met with good winds. There's lots of different banks and places that you can surf. And it's a place that can serve up anything. You've got like, you can have left banks, right banks, barrels, like out the back, like bomby peaks, shore breaks, 
weather's usually pretty good and you know it's not until november really when it starts getting really cold and as well you're in europe so it's a pretty expensive part of the world southwest france but the quality of living is very high. You've got great food, great cafes. In terms of job opportunities, I guess you've always got the classic surf coaching, bar type jobs. Otherwise, if you're living a digital nomad lifestyle, it's definitely possible to do in Hossegor. If there was anywhere to like rival Hossegor, I guess it would be Ericeira or Paniche. So Portugal has two main surf towns. For me, Ericeira has just got a little bit more to it than Paniche. Paniche is a very small place and there's not really that much going on outside of surfing. Ericeira is just a much larger town, so you've got more options of places to rent, places to stay. You've got co-working spaces. You've just got a bit more opportunity in Ericeira. There's also a few more waves, like you've got different reef breaks, you've got Cocious, you've got Riviera de Lash, you've got like loads of beaches up and down the coast. You've obviously got the cave. Um, there's so many different waves there and while it is pretty crowded you've got a lot of different options and yeah there's a bit more going on you know you can party you can work you've got gyms you've just got kind of everything there and as far as a european destination goes portugal is pretty cheap it's a bit more affordable than say Hossegor or San Clemente. So heading to New Zealand, we've got the sleepy surf town of Raglan. Now, during COVID, I spent around eight months living in my car in Raglan and I washed dishes, slept in my car and went surfing. And it was a pretty good experience, to be honest. Not particularly glamorous, but I got a lot of waves. Now, Raglan is a very small surf town. It's not really that much going on. So to make the most of it, I'd recommend you want to spend like quite a bit of time there. now. Raglan's quite a strange town because you've kind of got like the local crew and then there's like kind of a backpacker-ish community as well. I found that it was really easy to kind of be part of that backpacker crew with people who are like living and working and traveling in New Zealand, but to get in amongst the local crew is a lot harder, which is kind of fair enough. But Raglan itself, it's a really small town. In town, there's only like a few different shops and restaurants and one or two bars. It's really not that much happening. There's places that you can find to rent in town, you know, it's not that cheap. And then from town, you've got to drive out to the waves. So it's definitely somewhere you need a car. Around the coast, you've got the beach break, which is really consistent, can have really good banks on the right day. Then just up the coast around the headland there, you've got Manu Bay, which is on its day a world-class left-hand point. It's an amazing wave. It can have sections for tubes, sections for turns. It just kind of offers a bit of everything. And then just around the coast, you've got Whale Bay, which is kind of like a fun little left as well. And then my favorite wave is Indicators, which is the wave at the top. Again, another really sick left, which can have barrels, can just have six sections for turns, probably the most powerful wave out of the three points. And yeah, it's just a really beautiful part of the world. So, you know, if you're traveling in New Zealand, Raglan is definitely a cool place to check out. It's also really well set up for camping and living that kind of like outdoor lifestyle. So if you've got a van or a camper, I'd definitely recommend camping and living that kind of lifestyle in, in Raglan. Next up, we've got J Bay in South Africa. So. You know, we're going all around the world in this video. So J Bay is an epic surf town. I guess it's like the biggest surf town in South Africa. It's really famous. Obviously J Bay is world renowned. It's a right hand point by which all other right hand points are measured by. It's the best wave in the world on its day. So I was surprised at how big J Bay actually is. There's quite a bit going on for such a small town. There's a lot of hostels, a lot of places you can stay. There's a few bars, a few restaurants, you've got all the surf industry outlets in town as well. So it's quite a good place to pick up like cheap surf equipment if you need a wetsuit or a board or, or a couple boards. In terms of like job opportunities, I'm not really sure regarding that. Obviously the Rand is not the strongest currency, but if you're living like a more digital nomad lifestyle, then it's gonna be a lot better, you know, you, where you're earning and using stronger currency. Between April and October, this is when J Bay gets its best waves. It's when those like huge long period swells hit J Bay, when they have the CT. Now what's epic about J Bay is that you can stay kind of right on the point there for less than $15 per night at a hostel. You can also spend a lot more, you know, if you stay at one of those big beachfront villas where the CT guys stay. Next up, we've got Changu in Bali. This is actually where I am right now. Now, Changu is kind of everyone's favorite surf town. It's a really crazy place, to be honest. You know, there's it's not necessarily just a surf town. It's got a lot more than that. It's like a really popular digital nomad hotspot. It's a really popular party town. It's really popular for 
like yoga and things like that, travellers. So it's kind of got this mix of everything, obviously the local people who live here as well. While it's definitely pretty a pretty crazy place, there's a lot of traffic, it's very hectic. The waves are still very fun. You've got Old Man's, which is like a long boarding spot. Then you've got Echo Beach, which is like, there's actually three waves in the same stretch. You've got a left reef, a right reef, and then you've got like beach break peaks in the middle. So as far as surf, and it's really consistent as well, just the town has got everything as well. So if you're working online, there's so many different co-working spaces and places to stay, cafes to get work done. You've just got like everything you could ever need if from a surf town really, like so many different places to stay. It's very affordable. It's by far the most affordable place on our list. So yeah, while it's not for everyone in terms of like the crowd and general hecticness of the place, I love it just because I think the waves are fun and it's just got everything I need for getting work done and just having like a good lifestyle for a fraction of the price as what I can in any of these other surf towns. So yeah, a few honorable mentions as well. Puerto Escondido in Mexico is a wicked surf town. El Tunco in El Salvador, like a very small version of that. You've got Margaret River, you've got like Manly in Sydney. There's so many other places. Just to keep this list nice and short, I thought we'd just focus on these ones that I think are the best and most interesting. If you've been to any other epic little surf towns, please let me know down in the comments. Hope you've enjoyed this breakdown. Hope it's given you a few ideas on where you might want to visit or where you might want to go and base yourself. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed it. For now, it's goodbye from me and I'll see you in the next episode.